Hello friends, welcome to my YouTube channel RF Design Basics. In this video, we are going to solve one problem with RLC circuit where we have to find voltage at capacitor at t greater than 0. Means this switch was connected for a long time and at t equal to 0, this switch was opened. So let us see how we solve this kind of problems. So first of all, we will take time from minus infinity to zero. That means this is called a long time. Means before t equal to zero, this switch was connected. So we can draw the circuit for that period. This switch will be connected and due to that switch connected, there will be DC source supplied here. So we'll take DC source. And due to that DC source, the inductor will be short circuited and capacitor will be open circuited. So if we put a short circuit across this 20 ohm resistor, this will become a short circuit. So this is a 3 ampere current flowing in this pan manner. So the current through this branch will be 3 ampere. Whatever current is flowing, the same current will flow through this. So we can say that as soon as this switch is off, this portion will be removed and we will have only this circuit, which is R, L and C in parallel. The values are 20 ohms, 10 Henry, 4 millifarade. This is called source free RLC circuit. Now, if you look here, this is the inductor. So as soon as this switch is off, the current through the inductor will remain same which was passing through this line that means initially it was short circuited now the source is disconnected so that time the current will be same across the inductor and for capacitor voltage across this will remain same so the initial condition we can write initial condition is i0 plus what will happen if switch is off, it becomes source free and the current through inductor will remain same what was the current flowing before switch is off. So that will be 3 amps. And voltage across capacitor which is given as V here will be 0 because the voltage drop across this terminal, across this inductor is 0 because there is no voltage drop across this. So initial condition V0 will be 0 volt. So these are two information which is available to us. Later on we will find out the information dV by dt at 0 plus is what. This also we will be getting. Now since we have got a parallel RLC circuit and we know the solution of parallel RLC circuit in form of calculation of alpha and omega naught. If you are not aware of this, you may refer the solution. So alpha equal to 1 by 2 RC for a parallel RLC circuit and omega naught is given as 1 by root LC. So here we will calculate the value of alpha and omega naught. Alpha and omega naught we can put the values in this. So we have alpha equal to 1 by 2 RC. So 1 divided by 2 into R is 20 ohm into C is 4 millifarad. So 10 to the power minus 3. So we get 6.25. Alpha is 6.25. Then omega naught is 1 by root LC. So 1 by root. L, L is 4, L is 10 Henry, 
टेन हंड्रेड इंटू फोर मिली फेराडे फोर इंटू टेन टू दि पावर माइनस थ्री सो दिस इज इक्वल टू फाइव सो द सोल्यूशन ऑफ पैरल और सीरीज आर एल सी सर्किट इज रिटर्न बेस्ड ऑन दी वैल्यू ऑफ अल्फा एंड ओमेगा नॉट सो वी हैव थ्री कंडीशन इफ अल्फा इज लेस देन ओमेगा नॉट देन इट इज कॉल्ड अंडर डैम्प्ड अंडर डैम्प्ड इफ अल्फा इक्वल टू ओमेगा नॉट इट इज कॉल्ड क्रिटिकली डैम्प्ड and if alpha is greater than omega not it is called over damped so any rlc circuit will be either under damped or critically damped or over damped so here we can find out what it is so alpha is greater than omega not that means it is over damped condition and we should know the solution of over damped condition the solution is given as v or i whatever it is in this case i am writing v so vt equal to a1 e to the power s1t plus a2 e to the power s2t this is the solution where S one is minus alpha plus under root alpha square minus omega naught square, and S two is minus alpha minus under root alpha square minus omega naught square. If I put these values here, whatever values we have, alpha is six point two five, omega naught is minus five. i can put that value as minus 6.25 that is alpha first i'll take plus under root 6.25 square minus 5 square so i will get the value of s1 s1 is minus 2.5 and here by just changing the sign sign in between we will get value as minus 10 so these are s1 s2 we'll be writing in next page so our s1 is minus 2.5 s2 is minus 10 and solution is vt equal to a1 e to the power s1t plus a2 e to the power s to t so using the initial condition now we are going to solve this and find out the constant term a1 and a2 and we can complete the equation because s1 s2 is already calculated so see this initial condition we have v 0 plus is 0 volt so you can apply this so at t equal to 0 plus so this will become v 0 plus equal to A one e to the power t zero we can put zero plus a two e to the power zero so v zero plus is zero volt from here so we can write zero equal to a one plus a two this says that a one equal to minus a two or a two equal to minus a one so we can solve for one of them. and then write the other one let's take a2 equal to minus a1 and replace wherever we have a2 so the solution is vt equal to a1 e to the power s1t plus minus a1 into e to the power s2t so we got this expression now next we have the initial condition of i0 plus and how do we use this i0 plus for that we have to go back to this circuit this circuit so i0 plus is the current through the inductor so we can write this is i 
0 plus at t equal to 0 and voltage across this is V0 plus. So if I apply ACL over this node, so there will be current through this, current through this and current through this. I want to write all the currents together. So first current through this 20 ohm resistor will be voltage across this which is V0 plus divided by 20. So I can write V0 plus divided by 20 as the current through the resistor. The next current will be through the inductor and which is already known that is I0 plus. So I0 plus. The next current will be through this capacitor. Capacitor current will depend upon this voltage across the capacitor. That means it will become C dV by dt 0 plus. So I can write C dV by dt 0 plus which will be equal to 0. Now we have to just solve this and put all the known values in this. So first known value is V0 plus which is 0 divided by 20. Initial value was 0. I0 plus was 3 ampere. If you look back, I0 plus was 3 ampere. So I can put 3 ampere plus C. C is 4 millifarad. So 4 into 10 to the power minus 3. Then dV by dt 0 plus equal to 0. So using this we can calculate dV by dt 0 plus equal to minus 3 divided by 4 into 10 to the power minus 3. That means it is 3 divided by 4 into 10 to the power minus 3 will be 750. So it is minus 750. So what do we got here? We have got this dv by dt at 0 plus is minus 750. So take the differentiation of this expression. So if I take the differentiation, it will be dv upon dt equal to a1 s1 e to the power s1t plus a2 s2 e to the power s2t. We will get a1 from here into it power 0 minus s2 e to the power 0. So here we get a1 equal to minus 750 divided by s1 minus s2. And what is our s1 and s2? S1 was minus 2.5 from here, minus 2.5 and minus 10. So we can put both the values together. We get S1 as minus 2.5 minus minus 10 minus 750. So this equals minus 750 divided by 7.5 which is equal to minus 100. So we got the value of A1. A1 is minus 100. So we can put this minus 100 value in our expression over here. This is Vt equal to A1. A1 is minus 100 e to the power S1. S1 is minus 2.5t. Then minus A1 minus a1, A1 is minus minus plus 100 e to the power S2 minus 10 T, which can be written as Vt equal to 100 e to the power minus 10 T minus e to the power minus 2.5 T. So this is the final answer. We'll do one more problem on series RLC circuit. Thank you.